it's Sunday and before the working week can start it's time for more video games and consoles from the loft <laughs> Well, it's great to be back and welcome to part eight and today for you I have yet another two more items from the collection to show you. One's a handheld which requires you to use speed and skill and the other is a controller which you use with your feet and it isn't a dance mat and has actually never been reviewed on YouTube. And with no further delay let's start off with this. Pally Toys handheld split second licensed by Parker Bros. Now in part 7 I reviewed Q-Ball, also from Pally Toy, but again licensed by Parker Bros. So if you missed the background information, here it is again. Now Pally Toy was a British toy company, I say was, as they closed in 1984. They released Q-Ball from under the license from Parker Bros. Uh, Parker Bros being an American company founded in 1883 and are mostly famous for Monopoly. As for Pally Toy themselves, they released many dolls and toys as well and they released many many classics which we should all know about such as Action Man, Star Wars Figures, Tiny Tears and of course the Care Bears. Oh. And they released Split Second around 1980. Also it is very similar to Merlin and the Simon types of games which you may have played. So let's see what this one has to offer with a closer look. Well here's Split Second. Uh, I've still got the box as you can see which is in pretty good condition. Inside the box I've still got the original instructions. Uh, this instruction manual is absolutely brilliant. Uh, the, the instructions are clear and precise and easy to read and you can just get straight on with the game and you know exactly what you're doing. Uh, inside the box itself obviously is the console itself which is in really good condition and looks so futuristic. Uh, underneath the battery compartment you need to fit six double A batteries but they'll last a long time. On the back of the battery compartment itself is actually the instructions and the games and there are eight games as it lists on the back so if you lost your instructions at least you know what games you're playing for when you're selecting the games. You've got your controls on the front and the on and off switch on the side to turn the game on and off. On the front of the console itself you've got the screen, uh, the LED screen and your select button on the left there for selecting the games and your start button for starting the games. And then you've got four cursors for moving around. Well that's the console, let's have a look at some gameplay. Well, I'm going to show you two games. Uh, as I said before, this is how you select the games by pressing the select button. This is game one, and this is Mad Maze. And the object of this game is to move the ball into the goal at the end there, but you have to move the ball around the bars in as, in as, quickly, as, as quickly as you can, and in the shortest route as possible. And once you've completed this game, it will give you the amount of seconds it took you to complete it, so you can pass it around your friends and see who can complete it in the quickest time and it really is a good game and excellent fun and quick and easy to learn and as you see I've done it in 29.4 seconds now I'm going to select game 8 and this is speedball and the object of this game is to capture the ball in a square box uh, the longer it takes you the, the, the slower the ball will become and easier to catch although it does get quite confusing using the cursors to try and capture the ball but it really is good fun and once again you can share and see who can do it in the quickest time possible Split Second really is addictive and another great source of great entertainment and also another great way to interact with video games and talking of interacting with video games, here's another with this, the 2002 FIFA World Cup Football Stadium from Thrustmaster. Now if you saw part 6 then you'll remember I reviewed the Freestyler board also from Thrustmaster but if you missed that part Here's the background information again. 
Thrustmaster is a brand name for the Guillemot Corporation. The Thrustmaster brand offers a wide range in different products for PC and console accessories. The Thrustmaster brand was created in 1992 and has developed many controls for flight simulator games, boxing and snowboarding games. And here's another controller from Thrustmaster. The Football Stadium released in 2002 and they made two versions of this, one for the GameCube and one for the PlayStation 2. This is the GameCube version, so let's take a closer look. Well, it's still got the box as you've already seen, which is in pretty good condition. Inside the box itself is the map, which comes really compactly packaged, which is really awesome and great for storage. And once you get it out of the packaging, you can start unravelling it and it's so easy to set up. I've still got the original instructions and it all just folds out really nice and neat. Now at the back of the mat itself you've got the connection for the GameCube controller which you just slot in nice and easy and once again at the front you connect the mat straight into one of the portholes at the front of the GameCube. If we have a look at the sensors now, you can do a long ball, you can shoot at the goal, and you can pass. You can also use these sensors for throwing in and tackling as well. And all you do is run your foot over the sensors according to which one you want to use. Well, let's look at some gameplay, and I've got FIFA Football 2004. Well, here we go, I'm just about to kick off. There we go, just interacted with the goalie, and away we go. I'm kicking the right centre there at the moment, uh, so I'm passing ball to all of my players. I do find if you've got a training session with any game that you've got, try and use that first and get used to passing the ball between your players and moving about, because it can be quite frustrating when you're playing another team uh, in a competition. But like all things, once you've mastered something, you'll get used to it and you'll have really good fun. Unfortunately, I didn't do so well here, as I ended up losing the game. Well, this is another great idea for a controller, but it is not exactly perfect, as sometimes the sensors can be slightly unresponsive. Also, for some reason, the sensors can sometimes be muddled up, so instead of shooting, you could end up passing. Also, I find that having the GameCube connection at the back of the mat slightly awkward as well, and you could end up treading on this and breaking it. Although, this is a really cool idea, and I'm all for interacting with video games in different ways, and this is really realistic once you get the hang of it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed both these items today, and I'm sure you can probably pick these items up from anything from 10 to 30 pounds or 10 to 30 dollars. Have a great week. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next weekend for two more items for the collection. Thanks for watching.